the issues basically it's, it's a throttle body. It's like a motorbike. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Just because the camera's rolling, you don't have to you don't have to scare me. Right, hello, welcome back to the channel. I am down at Tom Barkley Racing again. Zach's popped down here to weld some bits up for Tom. And whilst we're here, he's actually running up his EFI converted E-Type on the dyno. So I figured I've got the camera in the boot. It'll be a good opportunity to get some sweet content for you guys and show you what Tom's been up to. There's a wicked uh, lightweight E-Type over there, which we'll have a closer look at in a minute. I think if you'd have seen my last sort of workshop tour video, this car was in and in the early stages of getting converted over to EFI. Now it's obviously all running fuel injection. He's doing the final tune up and set up but obviously Zach's turned up and couldn't help himself but get involved in uh, fiddling with the laptop, putting a spicy, uh, spicy tune up on it. Tom, you got to say that again, I wasn't filming that bit. What sort of power is it? Like 215 horsepower. At the wheels. What's the torque though? 215. Yeah, 215 foot power. Right. Zach said it's just like a PD diesel then. I bet that pulls really well. They're just like going through all of the rev range and just plotting it to try and get the uh, air fuel ratio where it needs to be.
So you haven't done flat to the floor yet? Yeah. It's 30% proper. Do a proper tug. <laughs> making 280 foot pound of torque now at 3858 rpm. What power would a standard one be with carbs and stuff? Would it make kind of... I don't know if you get much more, I mean... It's more about the drivability, the drivability of it, isn't it? what we're trying to achieve and stuff. Technically, you shouldn't get any more horsepower as such because they're both doing the same thing. Yeah. But you have, you have opened up the Venturi, you haven't got Venturi's in there, have you? No, because an SG is a variable Venturi, isn't it? Oh, of course, yeah. We have taken out that restriction. Yeah. But then at full chat, in theory, they should be... Well, out of the way. Yeah, up. Can you just do a quick rundown of what you've actually done on the engine? Because I probably should have done that before we started doing dyno ones. So it's a 3.8 XK engine. Yeah. This one has got slightly worked head, so it's got a flowed head on it. Um, uprated set of cams. Um, a set of steel rods in it, standard pistons. Compression is spot on to 9.5 to 1, so obviously we volume CC everything to make sure that the compression is bang on. 
Um, so that's about ready for a massive turbo. <laughs> yes, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Um, and that's really about it. It's just everything's balanced. It's got lip seal conversion on it, um, fluid damper, which is one of the conversions we do. Obviously, it's on EFI, so this is one of the first ones to run SUs that is injected. Obviously, Zach from Zoo Speed did the manifold for us, the man, the myth, the legend. So, just trying to work out, because anyone glancing in, it would take quite a lot to notice that it is not running on carburetors and is running fuel injection. Yes. It is very well hidden. Yeah, I, cu I couldn't tell when I, th I thought you hadn't started it yet, but it is all up and running now. Yeah, no, it's, you really can't tell. Yeah. So, the fuel line in is just redundant now. You're yeah. running a new fuel line or fuel rail now. Yeah, so what, what we're doing now is the SUs basically, it's, it's a throttle body, so, so it's just a butterfly. It's just a butterfly okay. now. So we've got rid of the dash pods. The dash pods are actually still inside. So what I've done is actually machined platforms up to go inside to keep the dash pot up. So yeah. everything can be reinstated. So is there still oil in that? You don't need any oil in that. No, there's no oil in it. But um, say if you were, I mean, it would be a bit of a bit of a job. But if you were, you know, you somewhere. Could. You know, abroad or something, and you had a massive failure at ECU, or someone stole your ECU, or something. You could literally put your needles back in, yeah, um, connect some f yeah, fuel line up, whack a distributor in, no off you go. go. So, so you haven't got. There's no dizzy. There is this a dizzy. Is, uh, instead of going wasted spar, I wanted to keep the period look. So obviously we've gone for a high output coil, and we're using the original distributor on the car. So that way it looks even more period. Otherwise, you know, we'll have to start tucking coil packs underneath yeah. it all that sort of stuff so there should be a TPS somewhere I can't see there is somewhere a little cheeky TPS on the end yeah smart so have you had to machine up the end to take that yeah it was quite a bit of work to try and get the TPS and to try and use um, a throttle return spring on it as well because you really want individual returns which they had you know from the factory yeah. and the carbs and I wanted to keep that instated so we could fully close the carb and whatnot and have a stable TPS reading. So that was uh, tricky, let's put it that way. Yeah, and I assume you've got obviously new pumps and stuff in the back. Yeah, so we've got a in-tank pump that we're running now, regulator, all that sort of stuff. We have run it so it's on a single line going down the car. So all the regulator regulates in the back of the car and it's one line coming no, down. No return. No, so all the returns done at the back. Okay. Um, Clever stuff. Yeah. So. And you said you played around with the airbox as well to try and yeah, free, so out, free that up. They're very restrictive. So one of the things that you normally do on the Jags and stuff, if you ran them without an air cleaner on there, they go massively lean. So you have to put really rich needles in there. Obviously, if you've got the airbox and stuff on there, they, they run perfectly on that particular needle. So they are a real hindrance. So what we've done is underneath it, we've cut away all the airbox to add more airflow to it and ducting to it. Um, and then we've run a big cone filter inside it. That way it's free flow and all that sort of stuff and works really well and it looks proper that's a real stealth install i think yeah. you'd have to be hard pushed to so there's the fuel rail down there that yeah it's that that silver well actually piece. zach's just dropped off another oh. inlet manifold mark two for mark then, two yeah what we're just doing so we're you could even you could even paint that like that satin black just so it doesn't you stand could, out yeah you could and you've already done like uprated fans and all, you know. Yeah, so this has got, you know, all the trick bits on it. So suspension and that sort of stuff. Coney Classics on it. Um, it's got the big brake conversion. Um, so it's an absolutely gorgeous car to drive. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. We'll take it out in a minute and see what it does. Let's do it. I'm the dad around here. Be honest, man, that's quicker than I was expecting it to be. The gears are so long, though. I know, considering your dad's is on like a 4 2 with weapons and stuff.
Are there any belts or is it? Uh, 1960s, isn't it? Right. I'm pushing like the my, ECU. Yeah, well, I'm pushing like the, the my, my brake pedal that doesn't exist on this side. <laughs> I'm just pressing on the ECU. How does it feel to before? Um, Compared to before? Good, yeah. good. It's so not a huge deal of, great deal of difference. It's more the low down like this. Response, you know, if you're yeah. just cruising in fourth gear, something like that, that's what we're trying to achieve a better, you know, because make it more of a drivable car. Yeah, that's right. So a modern car, you know, if you're in fifth gear, what we're doing, 1300 RPM, um, to be able to sort of accelerate like this now and just roll on the throttle. Roll on the throttle, you can feel the torque and it's, you know, it just wants to go, doesn't it? Yeah, man. It feels good. I mean, yeah. It's, it sounds good. It sounds awesome, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So with just using the dizzy, that's just a, like an electronic dizzy, so that you can't program any timing through the ECU. So yeah, you can program the timing through the ECU, so we're literally using that as just a spark issuer. Ah, oh, okay. So then we're telling the coil, sort of the dwell time on the coil, we're saying, right, you need to fire now. And, and do it that way, so it is still fully programmable. Oh, wicked. Um, Excellent. It just wouldn't have looked right if we started using a coil back. Yeah, and spark. then having like modern leads on it and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's it, that's it. So it just looks a lot more period. Seatbelt just to stop me from headbutting the windscreen. What a, what a glorious day to be out in your, just, in your convertible E-type e yeah. with EFI. That's it. And it should be better on fuel. Yeah, in you theory. Thought so, yeah. Not that that really matters when you're cruising around in a no, straight six. A, no. Well, mind you, my fuel prices know, the way I they know. are. <laughs> it is better, you know, it's much more efficient. You can get them to run a lot leaner um, when cruising. It'll fire up on the button. Yeah, eventually, once you get your cold start maps all sorted. <laughs> they are better, you know, and they're better for the environment as well, aren't they? Let's yeah. go face facts. You can run at um, stoichiometric, you know, 14.7. You're, um, not, you're not chuffing you're loads, not chuffing, of, yeah, loads, of, so, loads of emissions out of the back. Uh, Greta would be well proud, happy. proud of what well we're happy. doing, yeah, she'd give us a thumbs up. Yeah, think of the dolphins. That's it. To having a seatbelt on. No, I mean, you know, <laughs> just, the nice thing is you can hoon it and then you can Yeah, yeah, just... you can just. It is a really. I know I joke about like cars driving like a Bentley, but this is. This is actually really comfortable. Yeah, it really is nice. It's smooth, it handles reasonably you, well. Yeah, you could do a long journey in this. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's just comfortable, isn't it? And, you know, we're cruising it. 40 miles an hour, 1300 RPM, yeah. fifth gear. You Proper. might have noticed that I said fifth gear. Oh, this so is So this has got one of the um, Tremec conversions in the gearbox, which again is beautifully done, so it's got the gear knob and stuff. Full synchro mesh. Wow. This is quite a 
as well. What's this? So that's uh, the Jaguar head tuner they do, which got Bluetooth, DAB. Yes. Oh, it's the bees now. It's got really nice. It's got all the oh, toys. sat nav as well. So the sat nav all comes up. It's, yeah, an incredible bit of kit. And you've even got a phone charger. That's it. USB. Uh, yeah, that's that's a well impressed with that. That was well worth rushing over to um, <laughs> from work to hang out. It's, um, yeah, like the camera hit the window, <laughs> I went flying, <laughs> and he was just laughing his head off. I tell you what, he's absolutely awesome. Man. It really is. You would not expect that to drive like it does. No, I'm impressed with that. Yeah. Oh, right old spanking the poor old thing. Yeah, I won't press with that. Yeah. It's, it's the way to go with them. I yeah. think, you know, it's just yeah. no point missing. And it's reversible, as you said. That's it. You so can put it all back. You've not the devalued original, it in any way. The original fuel tank in it, the original bulkhead fitting at the back, all the original wiring still there for it, so you can literally, if you say, no, it's not for me, which you'd never say. Last beat. Like, um, <laughs> it was the it was the moguls that we went over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm well impressed with it. It's, yeah, yeah. A quick, way quicker than I thought it was going to Yeah. Be. I think the added so no seat belt smooth. for me just that oh, I'm not used to not having a seat yeah, belt. Just no roof, no <laughs> strap. <laughs> and it's a death <laughs> trap, isn't it, mate? All <laughs> all the best cars are the ones that can kill you in a hard bait. Yeah. I was more impressed with how smooth it is yeah. on the on the you know on the road. You think if you jump in, I'm used to like, yeah. 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 Well, obviously, all our stuff is on stupid coilovers with no actual suspension travel. But this actually shit before we fucked about with them. <laughs> <You> can't, <laughs> can't <swear. laughs> uh, yeah, they but weren't it, it, that great, and then we made them worse. Yeah, but they, this glides down the road. And this is on coilovers at the back as well. Oh, is it? It's a work of art as well. That that also yeah. is one of the Stunning. best looking cars ever, ever built. That is, I would say that is one of the best driving e I've ever driven. Yeah. Yeah, that really is. Yeah, you know, I'm very jealous. Hopefully, we'll have a very happy customer. Might not be if you watch the video. No, that's it. That's <laughs> like, uh, he did take time. Use it for social media, whatever you want. Okay. No, I'm I'm, I'm blown away yeah. by it. Yeah, I'd be. Yeah. Yeah, he gets. Made uh, up if, uh, if that was mine. It gets to the national speed limit reasonably quickly. Yeah, you know. on private so, roads. Yeah, certainly enough power to pull your foreskin back. It's not quickly to get to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your time again, Tom. Much appreciated. Uh, that was, yeah, that was good fun. Yeah, if you want to have a proper look around the workshop go back and check out the other video that I did down here with Tom and we have a little bit more in-depth look at the stuff that's under the covers. Um, put a link up there. Put, put a link up there. Uh, until next time, uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys later. Take it easy.